Here, we would like to present guided analytics for machine learning automation, a fully automated web-based application to select, train, test, and optimize machine learning models. This application was designed for business analysts to easily create predictive analytics solutions, applying their domain knowledge through a web browser without needing to open NIME analytics platform. In this video, we will automatically train models to predict flight departure delays from Chicago O'Hare Airport in 2007. To show the application, we first need to access the web portal. In our case, we select the workflow called Guided Analytics for Machine Learning Automation. Here is the first step of the Guided Analytics application, where we upload the dataset. Each page, starting with this one, has the same structure. A header with the flowchart at the top. A sidebar with the guide panel on the right. A section in the center, where the analyst performs the guided tasks. The flowchart at the top shows the different steps the application will guide us through. Upload file, select target, filter columns, and so on. The current step has a yellow border. In the following pages, you will see that previous steps are colored entirely in yellow. This serves as journey orientation. For each step, a number of decisions needs to be made based on our expertise and current goals. A description of such choices and the necessary technical documentation to make informed decisions are shown in the guide panel on the right. The technical instructions and documentation at the side include links to additional online resources. This first page requires us to upload the dataset to train the models. We upload the airline's dataset, which is restricted to the Chicago O'Hare Airport in 2007 from a CSV file. For this example, we are using a sample version of the dataset with only 40,000 rows. The next step requires us to select the column we are interested in predicting, the so-called target. To make our job easier, a preview of the top 10 rows of the candidate target columns in the dataset is shown on this page. We can select the target from this drop-down list. The goal of this project is to predict whether a flight will be delayed at departure. Delayed is our target column, since it contains yes-no values for the departure delay. We select Delayed and go to the next page. Here we can filter out some of the input columns so that we don't use them in model training. Column relevance is an overall metric summarizing three measures of column relevance. ID noise and constant value measure, and missing values percentage. Use the slider to select the input features based on their overall column relevance. Based on the slider setting, the columns with lower relevance are removed from the input column set. In our case, we can use the slider to remove columns like year, which are always constant, or like cancellation code, which has too many missing values. A measure of the correlation between each column and the target column is reported here. The linear correlation between such columns is measured and displayed. The second table allows for manual column filtering based on existing knowledge and field experience. The analyst can manually remove some of the input columns using the Data Explorer table. Clicking on a column name provides us with additional information about the data in that column, such as statistics and histogram. The table allows us to view both numeric and nominal columns. Using our knowledge on flights, we can assume that arrival delay and arrival time cannot be available in production at departure time. So we exclude them from further analysis along other similar columns. This page offers a list of machine learning algorithms to train the models. The offered models have different levels of complexity. If the time needed to train the model is not an issue and we simply want to see the best performing model, we should select all of them, 
especially the ones with higher complexity. We can later compare model performances as well as run times to choose the model that best solves our task. In contrast, if a convenient solution is what we are aiming for, enabling only the simpler models will save us time in both training and production. For our example, we select these models. Once the models have been selected, they can be refined. We have two options, automatic fine-tuning of the model parameters and automatic removal of outliers. As we can see from the flowchart in the header panel, we have two branches starting from the current view. If we select this checkbox, we will go through two additional pages, parameter settings for the hyperparameter optimization of the models and the feature engineering settings. Vice versa if we don't, we will cut through directly to the execution settings and let the application set up everything automatically for us. Additionally, this other checkbox enables the automatic removal of outliers. In our case, we decide to fine-tune the model parameters to show the full extent of this application and to proceed with automatic outlier removal. Therefore, we check these two checkboxes. Each machine learning model has its unique set of parameters. Given the selected models, here we can set the appropriate ranges for the optimization of the exposed parameters. Usually the larger the ranges of the values, the higher the accuracy. In contrast, smaller ranges of values lead to faster runtime. Changing these settings is optional. For this example, we keep the ranges small so that we don't have to wait too long for the training phase. In many cases, a model can be improved by creating new data columns from existing ones. This is called feature engineering. Here, we see a series of feature engineering techniques. If we do not choose a technique, no feature engineering is performed. With this slider, we can determine how complex feature engineering should be. Setting the slider higher means that more different subsets of features are experimented when training the models. An increased level of complexity leads to an increased runtime, but also to a wider exploration of the possible feature combinations. In our example, we keep those settings to a minimum, so we do not wait too long for the final trained models. Since we're on NIME web portal, your model process runs on NIME server. There are different options available to run the training of the selected models in distributed environments. The options will depend on what we have available in the system. Here, the following execution options are offered. Local execution. All parts of the workflow will run on this NIME server. Use Spark if possible. Parts of this workflow could run in parallel on the Spark cluster. For example, the H2O sparkling water integration can be used to train H2O models. Use Apache Spark MLib. Several model learning and optimization algorithms can be executed on Spark using the Apache Spark MLib. Use other cluster environment. Additional computational resources can be displayed here. We execute the workflow locally and we go to the next page. At this point, we need to wait for all the models to train. When the models are ready, we get a page on the web portal that displays some interesting measures for the final models. We can compare all selected and trained models by accuracy and area under the curve, or by training time and execution time for a single prediction. Based on these measures, we can decide which model we want to adopt and then download it from these links here to open them in NIME Analytics Platform. The first chart shows the model accuracy and area under the curve. For example, here you can see that the random forest model performs somewhat better than the generalized linear model because of its higher accuracy and area under the curve values. Let's move now to the training times. In our example, the gradient boosted trees model is much slower than the generalized linear model to train. The next chart shows the time required to apply the model to a new record. 
the same gradient boosted trees model that took longer to train is faster in predicting compared with the generalized linear model. The fourth chart shows the ROC curve. Just to summarize, in case we have lost track of the situation, a final table enables us to recompare all of those measures. If we require additional information to make our decisions, we can scroll down to the Advanced Assessment of Models dashboard. Here we can visualize the four different plots for each model. On the left, we have a bar chart displaying popular performance metrics. Recall, specificity, precision and F1 score. Then on the right, we have a gain chart. This black line refers to the performance of a random classifier. This gain chart could also be visualized as a lift chart. It would be interesting to know which of the input features have mostly contributed to the classification solution. Here we have the global feature importance chart, where the top six columns with the highest average rank in terms of global importance across all selected models are displayed. For each model, we display a bar chart that reflects how useful those six columns were in computing predictions. Finally, we show an interactive heat map of the confusion matrix. The button below changes the color scale of the heat map. If we are comparing different heat maps, we should keep the color scale normalized. But if we want to know the number of rows in each cell, we should click the original button. By looking at these four charts, we can easily spot many strange model behaviors, but we also have more information to compare what we train and select what we will in the end download. And we finish here. We have built a few models to predict departure delays based on the uploaded dataset. The whole process to train this model runs via a web browser. All of the required parameters were shown via the web browser and clearly explained in the bar side on the right. There is no need to meddle with the logic behind. Indeed, based solely on nodes and integrations from NIME Analytics Platform, we have developed a workflow which lets the analyst upload the data, quickly select what column to predict, easily filter out bad or not usable columns, select the machine learning algorithms, introduce and customize the parameter optimization and feature engineering phases, and select the platform for execution cloud, locally, etc. Then the machine learning models are trained in the background using feature engineering and parameter optimization. Finally, a dashboard is produced displaying accuracy and execution times for each model and a few additional descriptive metrics for model interpretation.